So it's time to get started with sharing awesome across multiple screens. My name is Atlee Hunter. I'm a Microsoft Solutions Architect specializing in Windows Phone and Windows 8 for Object Sharp. And you can reach me at Atlee Hunter on Twitter and you can see, see me on my blog at atleehunter.com. What we're going to look at today is we're going to look at a real world example of, of using MVVM and sharing code across multiple screens and actually across multiple applications, uh, which really helps to improve your ROI and, and really increase the value proposition of using MVVM. We're also going to look at the motivation and benefits of using it. We're going to look at API convergence between the different platforms of Windows Phone and Windows 8. And we're going to look at sharing some code with MVVM and PCL. So my real world example I want to start off with is a Windows 8 application group actually that I started building called, um, well there's a number of different applications. The first one was called Oh Baby and it is a, a collection of tools and application, little apps that help uh, expecting parents and new parents uh, with the things that they're going to see when, when having their first child. So what I ended up doing was I wanted to create the ability to have one application that would be a paid application but then break down the individual pieces and offer them as free components so that if you wanted the whole thing together you get it as a as a low cost uh, application all in one spot but if you wanted to get the individual pieces you get them for free and I figured that that would give a really good offering to the user groups or to the user base rather and I've seen that actually happen and it's been fairly successful. So in my, uh, in my uh, solution here, I have a number of different uh, applications that I, or apps that I've built uh, that are, are basically built around the, the concept of taking care of your young child. So I've got uh, a baby sleep schedule, uh, baby steps, a bump clock, and um, feeding schedules. And then I have the old baby application which puts them all together. And what I ended up doing was I ended up using um, uh, one single data model uh, to basically handle the accessing of the information that I've, that I've included and also uh, setting up the models to be used in all the applications. So all of the applications that I've built or all the apps that I've built are just referencing that one data model and then they're able to go in and get the information that they need and I can manage to maintain that in one spot and hand it across several different apps and then also have the one app that has all of the data and, and information together. Now what that also allows me to do is to do the same thing on Windows Phone because I've built the portable library which we'll get into a little bit uh, later on uh, as uh, being capable for both Windows Phone and for Windows 8. So. Um, that's basically just a, a quick look at that, and we'll get into that a little bit more uh, later on. But basically, the main motivation for using MVVM is to create code that you can share easily and effectively across multiple platforms. You can also use it to really increase your application development. One of the things that I've, I, I'm known for is for creating an, a, a large number of apps. And in doing that, I found that MVVM is very, very helpful in enabling me to separate my concerns and to keep the reusable code as highly reusable as possible. And, and for me, I find it to be just a fantastic option and a, and a great uh, improvement to the way uh, I had done coding previously and to the way the tools were available before. So one of the greatest things that allows this to work across platforms is the API convergence. So you have a lot of shared components in both the Windows 8 and the Windows Phone platform and those end up really, really helping make this uh, come together. Now, one of the things that you'll, you'll hear uh, being told a lot about the Windows Phone, uh, the new Windows Phone 8, is that it's using the same API kernel as the actual Windows 8 operating system, which is a really fantastic thing when you think about it, uh, both from a technical, technological and from a project management perspective, because it, you can see how that convergence is coming together. And what they're doing is they're basically working from the, bottom, from the ground up. They started at the kernel, and they're starting to make more and more things uh, work the exact same way on both platforms, which means that you'll get to an even greater convergence story as, as the versions progress. So with the old Windows Phone 7.5 API, you, what you had was you had a .NET API that was basically Silverlight for Windows Phone. And so it gave you the C-sharp and XAML uh, paradigm, and it was based on the Silverlight libraries. It was a, uh, at times a subset and a superset of Silverlight uh, 4 and then 4.5, I believe. 
And um, what that did is it gave you the ability to, to make some really robust and really, really interesting apps using the MV MVVM uh, per, uh, platform design. And what they've done, though, is in Windows Phone 8, they've actually added the Windows Phone runtime. Now, what you'll hear about is you'll hear about the WinRT or the Windows runtime. Well, the Windows Phone runtime or the, the WPRT is um, is a subset of that R that RT. So uh, again, it's a subset and a superset because it handles certain things that are not in the standard WinRT because there are things phones have and can do that desktop computers just don't do. So there are is a little bit of a difference there. So there are they are different API or they are different runtimes. Uh, so that creates a different layer that you're accessing. But then you also have the C++. Uh, elements that allow you direct access to the hardware for doing things like Direct3D, X-Audio 2, doing some of your Win32 uh, calls, and also for accessing COM. So basically what we'll see here is we'll see that on, um, on, the, on the, the left we have our C-Sharp and VB. We have our, it handles all of the, the basic things that we're familiar with from Silverlight. We have the XAML and HTML uh, access, we have phone features, the calendar, all of the different um, operating system components are accessed there. And then you have in the middle layer you have the C Sharp, uh, VB and the C++ elements which are part of the, Win, uh, the F Windows Phone RT uh, and that basically gives you access to things like the geolocating, the threading, the sensors, touch, all of those things, in-app purchases, speech, some really, really great UP APIs that they give you some really fantastic features. Then on the Direct3D side, we have access through the C++ libraries to things like Direct3D, Direct X-Audio, and, and a, f a bunch of other things. So if we were to look at this in, in, a, uh, in a graph, uh, this particular model, I, name escapes me for some reason completely. Uh, escaped my mind, but uh, I think it's a Venn diagram. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but um, so you'll see that the Windows runtime is a huge API set, and you'll see that there's actually a really uh, a huge crossover between the Windows runtime and the Windows Phone runtime. So you can see that there's a lot of really, really great uh, elements there that are included. So things like networking, proximity, the in-app purchases, a lot of those things that you're going to want to do on both uh, the Windows RT and the uh, Windows Phone side are available in something that you could put in a portable library and keep the same experience for your users and the same code experience for yourself across both platforms. So what that brings us to is sharing code with MVVM. So MVVM, when you first hear it, you, I, I was really confused when I first saw it because MVVM is kind of a mistaken sort of uh, order of the numbers because it stands for model view view model. But the thing is, is that when you really look, for, look at it, you're actually looking at the model, then the view model, then the view. Right? So that's, that's sort of the order that that goes. And it's, it's based on uh, MVC, and it's uh, something that's been... Uh, architected and expanded to include some really, really great binding and some of the other great capabilities that are available on, um, on XAML that uh, won't necessarily be available on other platforms. So it really, really relies on the XAML and the C, C Sharp to provide. So it really, really does. What it does give you is an amazing way to do loose coupling between your UI and your code. It really extends your reusability of your code. So it really allows you to take um, the items that are specific to a platform or a particular application and take those out and put the business logic and the, the models of your objects and everything into reusable libraries that you can then use not only between different platforms but as, as I showed earlier in my applications that you can actually use among several different applications. So when you're thinking of a business case for it, you can, you can I'm sure that we've all had situations where uh, in a, corporation, a corporate environment, we've had several different apps that would need to use the same general object models or the same general data structures uh, between those. So now what you have the ability to do with MVVM is to create common data structures, com common object models, common data access architecture that will then allow you to then share it among several different um, applications and thus really, really, really increase your uh, reusability and also just really cut down your development time, your ease of use of implementing new features and new whole, whole new applications. So 
It also gives you a great way in a team environment to really separate, separate the, the concerns of the designer from the developer. Now in my situation, I am the designer and the developer, but in a lot of situations you have a separate design team. And historically, and in a lot of other platforms, you'll find that uh, you give your, the, the design team goes off and does something, and when you bring it back, your code doesn't quite fit or mesh because something's been changed or something's been broken or it's just there there's it ends up creating a little bit more work for the team and there's a lot more testing done so in MVVM what you have the ability to do is as long as they don't change the initial the actual elements like the the number of elements that are there or which elements are there you have the ability to really create a disconnected uh, workflow so they can work on the design and when they bring it back you're you can be pretty certain that it's just going to flow because all they've been working on was the actual layout they're not changing any of the code that works with that you've been able to continue and work on that code either in the business layer or in the model layers um, without without worrying about how it was going to affect what they're doing it also really really makes it a lot easier to set up your tests uh, one of the biggest factors for uh, testability in most corporate situations tends to be time. Uh, you end up testing as much as you have time for before release. Well, with this, with the separation of concerns, while the design team and the other teams are working on things, you can actually have someone working specifically on test cases and test patterns for the particular elements that you want to test and make sure that you test every single layer properly and effectively uh, with much less uh, impedance on the original flow of the whole application's project. So in your model, what you're carrying there is your data or your business logic, okay? So you're actually looking at how do I get my data? How do I, what's my data gonna look like? And how do I get it in there? What's, what's that look like and how do, I, how do I effectively build that? And what you wanna do is you wanna build that as cleanly, as thinly as possible. And when I mean thinly, when I say thinly, what I mean is you want to make sure that you try to not overcomplicate uh, the the concept of your data model or of your business logic. Uh, try and keep it as clear as possible. If you do that, then you can actually find that you'll not only be able to use that data model in other .NET applications, other other Windows Phone or Windows Store applications. In a lot of cases, you can take a lot of that code and port it directly to other platforms like Java, um, and that can really really increase the value proposition as well. Now your view model is basically the separation, okay? The separation of the model that uses that the view uses. So this is basically where the view goes to get what it needs to get from the model, okay? So it contains, um, it, it lets you know, it lets the view know when it's supposed to update its data. It allows the view to go back and request different things and make uh, different uh, commands basically against the the business logic and against the data and there should be no UI code in the view model at all. Now in the view this is the part the user sees okay so this is the part where you are basically building the graphic elements and the part that when we get down to it in, in business uh, the part that they really care about they want to know what it's going to look like, what's the graph look like, what do the buttons look like, everything, all of those pieces are very, very important to how the user adopts the use of the application. So this is a, this a separation allows you to really focus and really set the right number of uh, resources on generating a really rich and robust user experience, which, uh, as we all know, can make or break an app. So sharing um sharing your code with a PCL or a portable class library. This is something that I found uh, to be incredibly useful. I, I wasn't really aware of it until fairly recently and then I started playing around with it. And ever since I started playing around with it, it's almost addictive. I almost have to make sure every app, I almost build my portable libraries before I build the rest of my app because what I do is I take my model and my thoughts on the business and I put them in the portable class library and then I go, okay, now where am I going to present it? Which actually turns out to be a very, very effective scenario for allowing yourself uh, really, really robust uh, uh, development. Uh, for me, I found that it's almost doubled my development to the point where I'm producing even more apps than I was before. So as you'll see here is, um, Portable class libraries only allow to call the APIs that have been available across the platforms you choose. So when you go in and set up a new portable class library, you're going to be brought, um, presented with a change target frameworks dialog. And what you'll allow to do is set 
what target frameworks you want to do. And the less target frameworks, or the more target frameworks, sorry, that you have, the less you can utilize in the APIs that you call within that portable library, specifically because you can only use the portable libraries that are available across all of those frameworks. So if I were to select in this dialog, Silverlight 4 and higher, I would probably lose a couple of APIs because they wouldn't necessarily be available to Silverlight 4 and higher, but they were in Silverlight or in .NET Framework 4.5 and in Windows Phone 8 and in .NET for Windows Store apps. So you have to look at what your needs are and select only the targets, uh, the platforms that you wish to target, and that'll give you the widest range of API calls. So when we're looking at uh, MVVM in a portable class library, we can see from this very really simple diagram that what you have is in your Windows Store app, you basically are looking at your startup uh, initialization or your app.xaml.cs and, and, and your app.xaml, which contains your, your shared elements across your app, your views, and the platform-specific functionality. So the only real uh, extensions you really need to make for each individual platform would be the ones that target that specific platform. So if I'm doing something in the phone and I'm doing something in Windows Store 8, I could maybe say in Windows Store 8, I'm going to use this set of items, but in Windows Phone, I want to include speech. Okay, well, speech isn't available at this time in Windows 8. So what I would need to do is I would need to add uh, additional classes and code in my Windows Phone version of the application to enable those particular features. So what I will get though is I will get the ability to share all of my views, my view model, and my platform functionality that's completely abstracted between the two. So when building your applications, you're going to find in a lot of situations you're going to have information and, and uh, services and API calls that are going to be specific to the platform that you're, you're using. Um, you can't always share everything across the portable libraries. You try to share as much as you can, but in certain cases you're going to need to write some platform-specific code. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick look at um, the, application I was, uh, the application group that I was looking at before, and you'll see that... Um, I've got a couple of code creators libraries here. Now, um, I have one code creator library that contains, it's very much, it's a portable library. It contains the same uh, uh, abilities as a standard portable library. So it's available to use across Windows Phone and for Windows 8 or Windows RT. And then I have a specific code creators.windows library. Now, this is one that focuses on elements and, and code segments that I reuse on across several applications, but they are specific to the Windows RT platform. And so you'll see things that um, I've got items in here like in the controls library or the controls class where I, I'm utilizing uh, uh, Visual Tree Helper and, um, and going through the Visual Tree to find particular elements or to find children of, of a particular element. And in order to do this, I have to access the Windows UI.xaml, the Windows UI.xaml.controls and the Windows UI.xaml.media namespaces, and because of uh, the differences between the API sets at this point between Windows Phone and Windows 8, that has to be in a platform-specific library. So that's why this particular library exists. Now, in other situations, you're going to have uh, a situation where you're using devices, and some of the devices and the APIs for accessing certain devices are separate between the two platforms. So in this one, which is Autographics, it's a, an application that I'm creating that allows you to take autographs right on your device and, uh, and then save them and share them. So in this situation, I have my portable library, which contains my main view model and, and most of my, uh, my logic for creating things like users, which again uh, will allow me to create a central user base that allows me to share information across different uh, applications, or different applications, different platforms, and uh, across different devices. Then I have my autographic, which is my business logic, which is the, the information and the, the methods that I need to be able to create the right experience with the, with the data and the models that I have. Now, in autographics for Windows, um, I have specific items, and, and this is still very, very uh, under development right now. Um, so you'll see that there are some specific things that are... Um, very, very specific to the platform. And uh, in the Windows Phone one, I have the items actually that are available for Windows Phone. And in here, predominantly what you'll see is I have, I have 
things where I'm utilizing the um, the capture the a capture source and the APIs for the camera. In order to, in order to utilize these capture source um, elements, I need to utilize platform specific code. So this is, at this point, it's sitting in the main page.xaml.cs, but that will be actually moved off as I apply more of the MVVM framework. Uh, I find that sometimes I end up writing my code initially in the page and then pulling it off, which I know is not necessarily the best thing, but it, it seems to work for me. So um, in this situation, what I'm doing though is uh, utilizing uh, other things like image brush. I found that image brush and image and um, writable bitmap and things like that are not available in a portable library because they do access different libraries. On the phone, they access the uh, system.windows.media.imaging and on uh, Windows RT, they access the windows.media.imaging. So it's a different namespace and uh, hopefully that's coming together much, much sooner rather than later. But it's definitely something that you want to look at if your application requires uh, objects that contain images or bitmaps, uh, that's going to be something that you may you may want to uh, you may want to focus and, and figure out the best use case for that because that is a little bit more of a platform specific scenario. So then we go back to um, our deck here for a second, and so. One of the nice things that you have the ability to do is to share um, certain UI elements. So when you're actually sharing your UI, you should be thinking about uh, the generalities of the UI, but you should be following the platform specific uh, details of the particular UI that you're targeting. So in, um, in the case of a phone, you're going to be looking at things in a different way than you're going to be looking at them on a desktop or on a tablet device or on a laptop. You, uh, you're you going to have scrolling, more scrolling up and down, whereas on a tablet or a desktop device, you're seeing with more wide, with the proliferation of wide screens, you're scrolling side to side. So it's a, it's a different paradigm, a different use case. So what you need to uh, realize is that while XAML is XAML, you do definitely have to take advantage and uh, design for the platform that you're using it on. Uh, one of the, the things that I've always found frustrating is when I t see an application has been taken from one platform and put on the other platform and it's just sort of been copied and pasted in there and it's not really, um, it's not really been redesigned or, or re-architected with the thought of how that works. Um, I, it's just, uh, it ends up frustrating the user and it, it just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right on the platform. So along with sharing more in the UI and, and being able to utilize things like portable libraries and, and getting your business and model shared across both platform and, uh, and across several applications, you can do more to share even more basically by implementing cloud services and using things like Azure Mobile Services to enable you to share both the data between different platforms that goes along very, very nicely with your portable libraries and your shared view models and your models. So with this, you are able to create an experience that allows the user to not only experience your application optimally on separate devices, but also to share the data so that they're not re-entering things or so that they're getting a similar experience and just adding that much more of a robust experience for your application. And this actually gives you the ability to also, through uh, an interesting monetization model, to enable this as a feature that says for Axion app purchase price, you can now share this between your Windows 8 and your Windows Phone device. So it actually can create a whole new revenue model for your application that you may not have previously thought of. So it's definitely worth taking a look at Azure Mobile Services. It gives you ability to really create a very, very fast and, and excellent experience uh, for your application to share its information. So we're going to just quickly recap on what to share and how to share it. So when we're sharing uh, items, uh, the view is platform specific, okay? That is the UI, that is the interaction between the user and the device. And that has to be reliant on what is best available and the best case for the device and the best case for the user to create the best user experience. Then what you have the ability is through really, really simple to use data binding, you have the ability to attach to your view model, which is your interactive 
our layer, which is the layer that basically acts between your business logic and your view logic, okay, and your view elements. And it gives you the ability to sort of separate out those concerns and create that complete abstraction between the view and the model. And that is, uh, ends up being a really, really robust and really, really powerful thing. And you should be able to make those view mo both your view model and your model completely common across different platforms and across, well, basically in this case, Windows Phone and Windows 8. So uh, next steps for this would be to go out and get a 90-day trial of Windows 8. You can get a, a Windows 8 trial that you can test and use in either in a VM on, on, on your device if you want to try it out in a VM, or you can actually install it on your computer and get going and get started and get developing on it. You can also go in and check out the uh, dev.windows.com, which is really fantastic. Check out design.windows.com and channel9.msdn.com forward slash windows. Also, what you should do is check out dev.windowsphone.com for all of the information that you can find on Windows tools, uh, for, for, on tools for Windows Phone there. And also check out uh, windowsazure.com. So you can see a really great example. You can actually really quickly and effectively spin up an application that you can run both between two different platforms and the cloud and see how it all sort of works together. It's really interesting and really, uh, really, really cool to try out. And also, again, you can reach me at Atlee Hunter on Twitter. I'm always looking for feedback. So anytime uh, you have any questions or anything, feel free to ping me. Thanks.